Thank you, Mike and the Solution Monday team for inviting me to the Enterprise Data Summit. I'm really excited to be part of this discussion along with a lot of esteemed speakers in data and analytics uh, in this industry. I am Deepak Jos. I am part of Marsh Wrigley One Demand Data and Analytics team. When you work for Mars, the fun thing is you can call yourself a Martian. And if I were in person today, I would have started by giving you a lot of M&Ms and stickers to begin with. At Mars, we are a purpose-driven organization and we believe the world we want tomorrow starts with how we do business today. I am going to start my session by playing a short video of who we are as Mars. I hope uh, you enjoy this video. learned at least something new about Mars. Mars is one of the world's largest privately held family owned businesses in the world. We have more than 100,000 associates and more than 100 years old with $10 billion brands. Now I am part of the Mars Wrigley team, but one thing that I learned for the first time when I joined the organization was that the Mars Pet Care uh, is one of the world's largest employers of veterinarians in the world. And they have a fantastic motto of building a better world for pets. We also have the Mars food segment and the Mars edge segment. And we believe in something called the five principles. And these five principles design and define the culture of the company here. Now, Today, I'm going to talk to you all about supercharging decision-making at scale. My session is going to be focusing on uh, what is my one-demand data and analytics solutions team and why is it needed. I'm going to talk a little bit about what is my strategic framework that we are leveraging within our organization and how are we implementing a new concept called connected analytics, which is about breaking various organizational silos all of us have uh, hearing about responsive uh, generative AI and how are we leveraging AI in a responsible way and what not we should uh, we should be doing. And finally, uh, as you are building your uh, careers within the organization, what is the so what? What are the key messages that you should be taking back to your organization to build your career in data and analytics so that we can create a value-driven analytics? So with this, let me start the presentation. Sam Walton, the legendary founder of Sam's Club and Walmart, he once said, there is only one boss, the customer. The goal as a company is to have customer service that is not just the best, but legendary. He told it several decades back, but this still holds true. And that is the purpose of our organizations. Now, for us at Mars, building that integrated consumer journey or building that brand experience, we have to navigate a complex omni-channel world. Let me start from the bottom up. 
our consumers learn about us through off platforms like our search through our the different aspects of social media they hear about us through the contents and reviews on various uh, cha channels we go to on platform we have the pure play e-commerce partners we have the brick and click partners we have the on demand delivery aggregators and finally we also have the ability to interact directly with our consumers through our d2c channels like mnms.com or our mars retail group stores now the key message that i want to drive is like the omni channel world is really complex and we have to navigate through these multiple touch points to give that uh, best brand experience but do you know what is happening in this organization uh, many of you might have heard the story of four blind men explaining an elephant and that is what is happening somebody uh, touching the trunk of an elephant and calling it as a big snake somebody is touching the leg and calling it as tree stem somebody is touching the uh, the tail and calling it as a furry mouse it goes on and on and this is happening in our organization the sales function the elephant in the room is our consumer at sales function sometimes explain the consumer a certain way the marketing function explains the consumer a different way the supply chain function explains the consumer a different way because all of us are operating in many cases with different sources of no, truth not a single source of truth and that is why we need interconnected decision and that's why we need to break the silo at marsh wrigley we believe that the secret sauce will lie in providing a holistic and integrated enterprise analytics supported by domain expert so that is the idea of one demand the idea of one demand means that we don't want to have a revenue management function with a different source of truth working uh, a marketing team with a different source of truth a e-commerce team with a different source of truth we need a one demand function which can drive a connected uh, integrated enterprise analytics so that is the fundamental idea of one demand function now how are we going to build it this is a very important part and this is the foundation of how we have built a team building a value first mindset start with the decision back approach now in the past we used to have a pyramid where uh, if you uh, i know many of you are in the data and analytics field it always started by building uh, probably a decade back by building a data warehouse probably for 5 6 years back we started building data lake now these days we are building lake houses in the future it might be data mesh it always started with the data foundation building on the data foundation we generated knowledge on building on that knowledge we started generating some small insights which generated some action which created some small value it was always a data first as value second kind of an approach at mars what we are encouraging is to have a value first mindset it always should start with what is the value that you can drive for the organization and to drive that value what are the actions that you can take and to drive those actions what is the knowledge and insights that you need and for that what is the data that you need to have instead of moving from a data first mindset our encouragement is to go with a value first and a data second mindset if you invert the pyramid you are going to drive value using data driven decision making and that is going to be very important as part of your organizational journey and that is the philosophy in which we have built our organization now to start building that value it is important to build a connected decision making so that we can give the integrated brand experience so what is the value that we want to drive i mentioned about the sales function marketing function operating so if you want to truly inspire an uh, uh, your consumer we have the brands we have the influencers we have the ad advocacy and once you inspire the consumer let's say if they are planning we have the portfolio health different kinds of portfolio choices that we are giving when they are going to sh shop you need to have a uh, better out to market experience a, a perfect store experience should be good when a consumer is going to buy you need to give them the right kind of pricing promotion be a perfect digital shelf when they are consuming there should be an opportunity to calculate to listen to 
how their experience what are their sensory experience and there is an opportunity to continuously engage now the important part is like when the consumer is inspired they might not decide to plan they might decide to go and buy directly during the engagement cycle they might uh, decide to go and buy directly so this is not going to be a linear consumer journey it is a integrated to drive an integrated brand experience, we need to think about a non-linear consumer journey, which is managed by different parts of the organization. And different analytical capabilities are enabling this uh, decision-making within the organization as well. So the key theme is the connected decision-making is very important within your organization. And that should be the first value that you should be delivering. And to drive a connected decision-making, it needs a connected data foundation. So it always starts with the business value or the business decisions. And below that, there is the strategic insights. You have the AI layer, which is supporting that. And there are the features which is supporting that AI layer. And on the foundation is the connected data foundation. Now, in a consumer packaged good industry or a manufacturer, the connected data foundation is a very important and interesting concept. What does a connected decision ecosystem mean? A connected decision ecosystem is a combination of the internal data sources, which is the internal financial data to the, uh, the internal uh, supply chain data to the, the various sources of internal data sources. That needs to be integrated with the third party data sources like a Nielsen or IRI, which we know. Uh, uh, again, this slide is purely for an illustrative purpose. It might be a different source within your organization. Now, it can be integrated with the second party data, which are the data these days, many retail media networks started sharing with us, which can be integrated with the first party data, which can be integrated with the zero party data. That's how you can drive the single source of truth. Uh, by building this connected data foundation. It is important to give awareness of the availability of data. That is another important aspect. The more easily these data is accessible and discoverable, you are going to drive value. And finally, the new age data source is available to consume. That is going to help you as well. So building this connected decision ecosystem is very important to drive a connected uh, uh, decision and integrated brand experience for your consumer. Now, when we started the team, we had this ambition to drive 500 percentage return over, over a period of three years by building 20 plus analytics products, driving 40 plus value cases within the organization. And it is going to happen with the help of people, which is the talent, the right kind of processes and the platforms. That is a combination of these three, which is going to drive value creation for our organization. Now, I want to briefly tell you a story or humor you with a story. I know some of you might have heard it. I heard the story from Brett Munster, uh, who is an innovator. He talked about uh, a Honda and Bridge. You know, for the people who have not heard the story, uh, in the early 1940s, the American government collaborated with the Honduran government to build a bridge to connect to vast majority of land. Honduras, the Central American country, if you don't know about it, the country is prone to a lot of natural disasters like earthquake, flooding, etc., now, the both of this government collaborated and built a bridge. And that build, bridge was built to last. And it connected to vast majority of the lands. Now, it withstood several natural disasters like earthquake, hurricanes, etc. Now, years passed by. Decades later, there was another uh, earthquake um, uh, in, in the country. Uh, the earthquake, uh, sorry, uh, hurricane in the country called Hurricane Mitch. And because of Hurricane Mitch, do you know what happened? There was a lot of flooding. And because of that flooding, the river changed its course. Now you have a bridge with no water under the bridge. Now this is a very interesting story, uh, especially because of the fact that uh, we recently all of our organization, all of us went through a major natural disaster, which is COVID-19. 
Now, all of the, our ways of working started changing. Uh, the We have started the consumer preferences changing much faster. Our e-commerce business for a, a many manufacturers quadrupled in one or two months. And these changes are happening. Now, if we had built the capabilities to last rather than build to adapt, then it would have been a huge problem. So when you are building your data products, when you are building your capabilities to scale, it is important to build to adapt rather than build to last. I think that is the important way of building your data and analytics ecosystem. Now, what does that mean for us? Our theme of the team was to build a hundred percentage of decision uh, making. It should be supercharged by advanced analytics. And how are we going to power this up? We want to strategize using a certain number of tools. How do I forecast the future shape of the category or the business? We want to plan uh, with a certain kind of tools, which, which demand levers do I pull to drive growth? And finally, how do I optimize? How do I learn, adjust, and optimize? So three kinds of capabilities that we built. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to talk to you about one of these capabilities, which is called the integrated consumer analytics capability, which where I'm going to talk to you about how can I optimize my customer uh, PNL uh, and how this data product is uh, coming to life. This is a capability which is recognized externally by some of our customers as well. And this is a published use case for Mars. So I'm really happy to showcase this uh, capability to all of you. Uh, so I'm going to play a quick video to showcase what is the use case and how this data product is helping. Hi, I'm Kelly Gehring. I lead one of the sales businesses in the U.S. market, New Transactions. Winning at Amazon requires us to decipher and win their very complex algorithm. Oftentimes making real-time decisions around areas like supply, category, digital shelf, and portfolio. We get over a million different data points coming at us, and we oftentimes have many disconnected tools to be able to collect that data. This often leads to very slow, siloed, and often misguided actions for decision making. The days of piecing them together for a comprehensive story are just not tenable nor sustainable in the dynamic changing world of digital commerce. Enter Voyager, a data-backed solutions tool and one single source of truth for digital commerce. Voyager provides performance and insight tracking across multiple work streams, namely product and portfolio, market, supply chain, investment optimization, and search and category. Voyager is a comprehensive AI powerhouse that drives data-backed solutions to drive a more efficient and effective digital commerce business. Voyager has made an immediate impact on the U.S. business. Four areas are we will see a $3 million MAC enablement in 2023. We freed up over 20 plus hours for our associates per week. The third is really this interconnectivity between our one demand partners. And the last one that I'm really excited about is the scalability of Voyager. We've been able to take this to our top five customers in the US and also scale it across different Amazon markets globally. The Voyager I hope this gave you a good understanding of one of our uh, data capability. Now, why was this quite exciting for us? This capability helped us have one of the most successful Halloweens in the history of Halloweens. So last year, um, uh, I mean, Mars was recognized by the industry as a CPG to watch. And it was uh, one of the most featured CPG in Spotlight with a strong visibility and a consistently effective approach on content across several retail platforms. And I think uh, this is something which we are really proud of and, uh, uh, and that helped us drive some of the best in class capabilities uh, for the organization. Now, th this does not stop here. Now we 
had a fantastic uh, partnership with Amazon as well. And this is something which the Amazon team, we were able to build our partnership between Mars and Amazon to a great extent as well. This is how we were able to build a significant competitive advantage for the organization. Now I'm going to play one more video uh, from Amazon team talking about how this helped build a partnership between both of our organizations. Hey everybody, Justin Hahnemann. I lead our retail and consumer goods go-to-market team. And on behalf of Amazon overall, I want to thank you for our incredible partnership. Let's talk about Voyager. So Voyager is a really interesting and unique innovation here at Mars. Um, I find it particularly interesting because I work every day with major CPG brands worldwide. And I haven't seen something that's been developed like this and being leveraged in a way that's truly driving value, not only internally, but for your external customers and then the end consumer. So what's really unique about Voyager is it's powered by the right data, first of all. And getting the right data together in a, a way that makes sense to be able to use it and drive analytics on top is not easy. And your team here has done it. And you're going to find that it, it really benefits you in a number of ways. Number one, it's going to help with the planning process. It's going to help match customer demand to what inventory is available. It's going to help you to resolve some of the very manual processes of, of receiving POs and integrating POs and getting data off of POs and then understanding what that data means and then fulfilling those POs with the right product, right place, right time. What's also really unique is that the Voyager platform is an example of customer obsession. It's one of our leadership principles at Amazon. So you started with a business problem and use cases. You worked backwards, which is one of our favorite phrases at Amazon, to say, what is the capability that's needed? And then what data supports that? How do we get that data in a place that makes sense? We can use it to drive value. Powerful. So I'm really excited about the Voyager platform. I can't wait to see what else we can be doing with it as part of our partnership. And I'm looking forward to seeing. I, I hope uh, you enjoyed the discussion. So with this, let me close the first key aspect of the session, which is like, what is the value which the data and analytics team can unlock? At Mars, we believe in five principles, and I want to highlight three of the five principles. We need freedom to define our future, but we need profits to remain free. Data and analytics is driving top line and bottom line growth for the organization. Mutuality, we cannot will win individually. We need to win together. Building data and analytics solution, we are not in the business of building capabilities which is not only for the internal teams, but also for our stakeholders. We want to help them move with a lot of speed and we want to help them drive a lot of savings uh, when it comes to, and so that they can reinvest their time for something better. And finally, efficiency. What we have seen when we build a data and analytics solution, we were able to drive a lot more flexibility and accuracy when it came to uh, uh, the organization. That's how we are, uh, especially during the post pandemic time period, we, we have realized that the more data that we are ingesting, we are able to drive incremental accuracy. And because of the fact that we own the data engineering layer, we were able to add more and more data sources. Having that in IP owned by the organization helped us tremendously. With this, I want to get into the next section, which is on the importance of responsible AI. We believe that the responsible AI is non-negotiable at Mars. It always started with AI code of conduct. How can we have the right kind of governance principles when we are leveraging AI programs? Now, uh, the second aspect comes to how can we give governance to ensure the fairness of the AI models? And uh, let me start with a couple of examples. What does the fairness mean? Uh, you might have heard of some large organizations leveraging AI for their hiring practices and in, in the data and analytics space itself. And do you know what happened? The AI solutions had a disproportionate bias against women because the historically women were not prominent in the data and analytics space. Now, this is why we need to ensure the fairness. Inclusion and diversity in talent is very important. There are many aspects for diversity. I am going to highlight about the gender diversity. In the industry in data and analytics, the gender diversity in many cases is less than 20 percentage. There is something which I am really proud about Mars. Uh, it starts from the top, 
my leadership team, uh, I am really happy to share with you that we have 50 percentage female leaders who are bringing the diversity to the team and they are inspiring more and more women to join the team and improving the gender diversity. Now, diversity is in numbers. The second aspect is inclusion. Inclusion is the mindset. Mindset is very important. Another important aspect is privacy, security, and ethical collection of data. Uh, at Mars, we don't collect the data from children, which is an important responsible marketing principle. We are also making sure that when we are building a AI capability, it is we are ensuring the transparency and explainability as well. It always combines with the test and learn mindset. And uh, the most important part of it, AI capabilities are going to be a significant driver of um, uh, resources, uh, including generating greenhouse grants, uh, gas, GHG. And we have to be very conscious of how we are using the resources in a sustainable way. Now we have built uh, under the responsible marketing officer of the company, Jackie, there is a responsible AI board. I am I am part of it as well. This is not only a Mars Wrigley initiative, it's a Mars Inc initiative. And we partner with our part, uh, with multiple uh, folks, including Microsoft, who are a leader in the responsible AI. We also partner with other cloud providers like AWS, Salesforce, et cetera. We also partner with NGOs like Responsible AI Institute, Women Leaders in Data and AI, Fractal Analytics, which is an analytics partner. And we also learn a lot from our partners in educational institutes like Cornell, Northwest Un University, et cetera. Now, well, I talked a lot about these areas. Now, I want to share a little bit about what are, uh, how can you build your data and analytics organization better? What are some of the key learnings from my side? And there are uh, four or five key learnings that I want to share with you before I let you go from this session. And it starts with capability is more than tools. It is about people. Now tools, it is the easier part to build. If you have a strong data sciences, data engineering team, we can build the tools, but it is only the part of the solution. Along with the tools, we need to have the right kind of organization, the right kind of skills and competencies within the organization, which needs to be embedded with the processes, which needs to have the right kind of culture. That is the honeycomb structure at Mars that we leverage. It's not only about tools, it's a combination of all of these things which are going to make you successful. And for us to be successful with the right kind of uh, culture, it always starts from the top. When the leader starts asking data-driven questions, the associates will start giving data-driven answers. Organization culture and change management is very important. Now, as data and analytics practitioners, and this is my second elephant analogy, as data and analytics practitioners, we start our journey. We, we think that we are the rational mind. We are the data and analytics people. But our organization, the elephant, it is an emotional animal. The, the animal will go wherever it wants to go. So it is important to cater to the the human empathy is going to be very important if you want to truly drive change that is that is very important what we have realized is that for every one dollar that we spend in uh, capability building or tool building we need to spend that equally one dollar for training and upskilling and change management which is going to be very important and uh, now at this point, you guys might be wondering, I, am, uh, I have too many animal analogies and I watch too much geography, uh, National Geographic channel. That is a, to a great extent true. But let me ask you this question. How do lions hunt gazelles? Now, gazelles, they are very fast animals. They run almost twice as fast as lions. The, when lions hunt gazelles, the older lion would be hiding and the younger lion would start chasing the gazelles. The gazelles would run so fast and when they are closer to the lion, uh, the, what, do you know what does the older lions do? They just jump up and roar. When they roar so loud, the gazelles would become so scared and it would become like a deer in front of the headlight. And that's what happens they get so scared and they are unable to move. 
and do you know but in some cases uh, when they get scared they they cannot move and the lion would have them for their lunch but do you know how do some of the gazelles escape the gazelles that though uh, those who escape they continue to run towards the lion and they can simply jump through them because they are fast and they are agile a mentor of mine told me this story if you have to truly change the biggest capability that you need to have should be the courage the courage to challenge the status quo within your organization that is the biggest capability that you need to have and that it's not a soft skill but i think it is it is not a hard skill it is a soft skill but that courage is going to challenge the status quo is going to truly help you transform the organization and my closing note i grew up in india and a lot of my leadership principles were influenced by mother teresa she once told this thing not all of us can do great things but we can do small things with great love so i encourage all of you to go back to your organization find that one tough problem that you want to solve solve it with a lot of passion and you will be really successful at what you do with this i'm going to close down my session i would love to get your feedback uh, uh, from all of you so please feel free to connect with me on linkedin this is my qr code um, and with this i want to thank uh, mike and the solution monday team for giving me this opportunity to share not only my my team's work at mars regularly one demand data and analytics team so please feel free to reach out and connect and i hope uh, we'll be able to learn from each other thank you thank you very much for this opportunity again